Hey everybody, this is Corey Abshire from Databricks and I want to show you how to run Learning Agents on Databricks. So this is Learning Agents. This is basically just running through the normal Learning Agents tutorial that Epic has on their website. And what I'm going to do is show you how I can go run this job in Databricks. It's going to take that Learning Agent program and running it on a Databricks cluster and then retrieve all that experience and train it on Databricks and then pull the model back into my local game instance so I can monitor it. So I'm just going to kick off this training job here. And then we're going to jump into Databricks. And we can see this job starting. Uh, it should start in just a second here. So yeah, um, whenever I triggered that job, I used a uh, technology called Databricks Asset Bundles, which lets you basically um, use uh, infrastructure as code to define all your Databricks uh, workflows and jobs. It makes it really easy to integrate with Visual Studio uh, Visual Studio Code, so you can just like easily come in here and say, "Okay, I want to kick off this uh, kick off this workflow," and then it starts it on the database cluster. So now we can see it's running here. Um, and basically, to run Learning Agents on Databricks, we took advantage of this great new uh, great new uh, integration that we have with Ray. So basically, you can run a Ray cluster on top of a database cluster. And so what this uh, what this workflow is doing is basically spinning up a Ray cluster on top of Databricks. Uh, so it's starting the Ray cluster now. And then also we set up a MLflow experiment so that as the model is training, we can keep an eye on its performance. Uh, so this is the experiment run for that particular uh, training run that I just started. And then I have a loop that's basically pulling down the weights um, every couple of seconds. So this is just uh, running that loop. run it again here. So every time this fires, it's just pulling the most recent copy of the model weights down from the database cluster local so that I can um, reload those into my uh, uh, game here. And then as the job starts, it may, it may not have started yet because these still look pretty smart. Uh, but you'll see the, the, the model will all of, all of a sudden be untrained. Um, which means that the, the agents won't be doing all that much. Uh, so let's go take a look at the job here and see if it's started up yet. Okay, it looks like it's just now started. So we'll go cause it to pull the latest weights down again. And then we will restart the job or restart the, the game. So I'm just waiting for the the cars to start driving off the track, which hopefully will happen in a second. These are still still looking pretty smart, so let's make sure it's reloading the models. Okay, there we go. So yeah, this is what it looks like when you have an untrained model, which if you've ever walked through the learning agents tutorial, then this will look pretty familiar because it takes it a while for the agents to actually train if you just run through the tutorial. So this is what the agents look like when they, they don't have any intelligence yet. But like if you run through the learning agents tutorial, you can get a model up and running in like two hours, which is great. You know, you have 32 cars driving around the track. That's generating a pretty fair amount of experience. But then it, it takes it like 30 seconds to 45 seconds to generate enough experience to do another iteration of the training run. Um, and then your computer will pause while it's actually doing the training run, which takes another 10 seconds. And you need to do like, you know, 100 or so at least iterations before the cars actually start showing intelligence. When we're running on Databricks, we're actually running on a cluster. So instead of just having one game instance, we've literally got 20 game instances. So if we go take a look at the Ray cluster here, which you can still get to your Ray cluster dashboard from within Databricks, you can see we've actually got 20 instances of Unreal running across five Databricks cluster nodes. So each, each node in the database cluster has eight CPU cores, and we use two cores per game instance. So, um, you know, four game instances per node times five nodes that I've got in this cluster means I've got 20 game instances. All of these are running optimized copies of this game 
on the cluster uh, to pull experience. So I can pull twice as much experience as I was getting on my game in three seconds. So I went from 30 seconds per, uh, 30 to 45 seconds per game iteration to only three seconds to pull the same amount of experience or more. Um, and now that it's gotten through a couple of uh, training iterations, you can see I've got it um, continually updating the weights from the cluster. If I go rerun the game, you'll see it get smart. So I'll just reload, refresh the models. You can see now the cars are starting to go around the track. Uh, but they're still kind of, they should still be like driving off the track a little bit. For some reason, F8 is not working. Okay, there we go. So yeah, you can see the cars are kind of doing pretty crazy stuff. Um, so it does take a couple of minutes still, but it's only, um, you know, instead of two hours, it's three, three to five minutes. So if we give it just a couple of more minutes here, then um, we should see it start to get uh, intelligent pretty quickly. While this is running, I'm going to show you a little bit about MLflow, because there's other aspects to scale that Databricks can help with beyond just getting the experience faster and training your model faster. So learning agents is great, and you're gonna to wanna to use it for a lot of different things in your game. But the thing is, like, whenever you start to scale up the number of models that you're training and the number of people that you have working on this thing, things can get really confusing. So that's where MLflow can really help. Um, the same, uh, same technology that you know, thousands of companies use for training all kinds of ML models, not just reinforcement learning models, but like recommender systems, uh, analytics-related uh, um, uh, models. All that same um, technology can be brought to bear here. So you can get into MLflow by going to experiments. And you can see I've got hundreds of experiments that I can track across this. All of this um, learning agents um, runs that I've been doing is just in this one experiment. So I can go tag this experiment with like whatever uh, metadata that I want to put with it. I can have a nice description that um, other teammates can find. I can um, add tags to the experiment that say like, okay, this, this particular model is trained for my off-road car. This particular model is trained for my sports car. Or like if I'm training for NPCs, I can tag with the specific NPC that that's trained for. Uh, I can also keep track of like all the hyperparameters that I ran with. So, you know, learning agents makes it easier to get up and running with this, but doing reinforcement learning is still hard. Like you're still gonna have to do experimentation with like what reward model works best. What set of hyperparameters do I wanna use with my model? All that sort of stuff, you still have to keep track of like your experiments. And that's where MLflow can keep, keep track of like all the hyperparameters and other configuration that you did with your learning agents run, we can capture all that as a set of uh, parameters and the resulting metrics that you got from the run. Um, and you can track those across runs so that I can say like, of the last 10 experiments that I did, which ones gave me the best, uh, the best set of resulting metrics? So the one that I'm running right now, you'll see this is like by steps, so I can change this to being by seconds. So I'll go for um, wall clock. And, oh, I should do uh, relative. So this is how many seconds it took um, to achieve these different, uh, different sets of returns. And you can see like the average return gets up to a pretty optimal state within like 200 seconds. So that's a, you know, a little over three minutes. So we've been running for a couple of minutes now. Um, we can go back into the game and refresh our models. And, and now you can see it's actually got pretty decent performance. Now it's still like getting off the track a little bit here, but you can see within like two to three minutes, um, what would have taken like an hour or two on um, like learning agents on a single node, um, is now uh, achievable within minutes. And this is for a relatively simple game, relatively simple model. If you think about like what it looks like to train like a full-fledged game on something like this, then you're gonna need like a lot more powerful compute. 
in order to generate enough experience quickly enough to get um, to get a reasonable level of intelligence into your NPCs or whatever else you're going to um, use this model for. So that's where uh, you know Databricks can really help help you achieve like a higher level of complexity in your model. Um, you know, way more um, way more sophisticated games that you can apply it to, and way more sophisticated observation and action spaces. Um, you can also use um, you know use the integration between um, the algorithm that's controlling um, learning agents uh, within the Databricks platform to do things like you know if you want each game instance to be running like a different a different course. Say you're training like a racing uh, a racing simulator, you could potentially have each of those game instances running a different course uh, to generate your experience. Or you could do cool things like, you know, having it work through a progression, like with, with curriculum learning. So you start off with like all the game instances running like a simpler uh, simpler type of um, course, and then progressively get to more and more complex courses. Um, likewise, if you're training like um, an agent for a shooter, then you could you could have like each each instance working on like a big map or starting with an, a different initial state. Um, and and keep track of exactly what curriculum you ran your game through in MLflow. So that way you can you know whenever you do get a really good model, you know exactly what um, what you use to achieve those results. So yeah, that's basically it. I'll do one final refresh here on the game and see the final performance. Yeah, and so like you can see these these cards are behaving pretty much optimally now. And let's see, let's take a look at the, the workflow. Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, I'd love to love to pick your brain on it. Just hoping the workflows. We can see that, that that particular instance finished. Uh, we can see all the um, all the logs that learning agents would have normally generated locally, those are all being recorded both here and then in the ray actors. Um, yeah, we can see, like, I think I set this to run for 32 training iterations, or maybe this one was set to 100. Anyway, however many iterations it took to get to that level of performance, this one ran for 10 minutes total. But if you want to see, like, you know, okay, what sort of, uh, what did that training curve look like, then I can go to, into the experiment uh, for that particular run, and you can see, like, the average return was al already looking uh, pretty decent after... Um, after only a few steps. So we'll look at time relative. So yeah, this is uh, 600 seconds. You see I was already getting a decent level of return after just a few seconds. Or after a few minutes, sorry. And that's, uh, that's learning agents on Databricks.